Now, most islands in the middle of the oceans are volcanoes. There are only a couple of island forming processes, and usually when you see something that's out in the middle of the ocean, there's a good bet it's a volcano. There are not many pictures online, there are close ups, but I looked at a couple of these, and one of the things that happens, obviously, when a lava flow goes over snow and ice, it melts the snow and ice. Some of these probably are lava flows, but some of these also are probably actually little meltwater floods that were generated by lava flows melting snow and ice. And then because ice is basically relatively impermeable, once you melt water on the surface of the ice, it's going to flow over the surface until it gets to a place where there are lots of cracks, and then the water disappears down into the ice. You're not going to melt ice instantly. It takes a little bit of time for the heat transfer um, to actually turn the ice into liquid water. And so in that time period, especially if you've got a volcano like this that's very steep, the lava flow is actually moving faster than the ice can melt. And that's why the lava flow can actually move over the surface of the ice until it hits a crevasse or a fracture. Or sometimes if the lava flow stalls and sits there for a while, it starts to find fractures in the ice and it burrows down into the ice. And once they've melted down to the base, they continue along the cracks but underneath the ice. And we've seen that that's probably some of the things that's happening here at Hurt Island. And this kind of thing has also been documented um, at other volcanoes like this. So even though it's kind of counterintuitive, it's actually what we expect now. If you have a relatively rapid moving lava flow, it will go, it, it almost has to go on top of the ice because the ice can't physically melt fast enough to melt as the lava flow approaches, especially for these kinds of volcanoes. And, and these lava flows on a steep slope like that could easily be moving several hundred meters per hour. They're moving too fast to melt the snow and ice ahead of them. And so they just go right on top. And, and the way these lava flows move, the flows are covered with broken rocks on the surface, and they get transported to the surface, and then those broken rocks fall down on top, and the rest of the lava gets pushed over that. And that actually helps the lava flows go even further over the snow, because the melting rate is, is fastest when you have glowing lava, because that's the hottest lava, and it's actually radiating heat. So these, these uh, ah, ah flows, when they get to the front, they dump all these big broken rocks, and then the main lava flow comes over the top of those broken rocks. Well, now you've got, you've got essentially a thermal boundary layer in between the bottom of the lava and the ice. And so that actually protects the ice, which means the lava flows can go even further before they melt the ice and go down. When you develop this boundary layer, not only does it keep the ice from melting, but it also means the lava flow stays hotter longer, which again helps the lava flow go further and further down the hill.